Welcome back the introduction L and in this lecture will be helpful hints for a teacher. The difference between learning and acquiring language and teaching helps those teachers who are looking to improve their teaching to ELL students. The difference between acquisition and learning is when you acquire a language it is like picking it up naturally. When you were 2, 3, 4 years old, you learned the language because you listened to people and you were able to acquire the language so you could understand what they were saying. You didn't need your parents to sit you down and say this is an apple or this is an orange. What is this? What is that? You just learned it subconsciously and then it was implicit. You did not need to go to school to be able to speak English or your first language. Trying to learn a second language is another story. You really may need to go to school and you have to learn about the language, know it and understand it. While you study, you become very conscious of what you're learning and then you have explicit knowledge which means you actually learn each word. The parts of grammar and the only way to do this is to study in depth. Teachers have an impact on how students learn and their future. The effect on all students in the classroom is many students give up on learning due to, for example, teachers' concepts and attitude. There are some ESL teachers that believe if a student cannot learn English they are too dumb to learn and the teacher doesn't want to take too much time out of their busy schedule to help ESL students. The teacher gives up and then the students soon follow. When a teacher does not want to take extra time or do any work with that student and this primarily happens when a teacher is from one ethnic group, they have a new student. Some teachers they think to themselves why isn't the student act like me, think like me and talk like me. In a nutshell, students give up on learning English due to misconceptions or from the teacher attitudes. The teachers who actually take an extra step to help students actually have better students whether they are ESL students or regular mainstream students. The teachers who give more to the students have more respect from the students and they learn faster. Some helpful hints when you're teaching is your teaching use TPR or total physical response. How this works is you motion and act. For example, you are asking a student if they want a drink. You pretend you are drinking. Hold up an imaginary cup to your mouth and act like you are drinking. By using this method students will understand what a drink is or try to remember the phrase, just by your hand motions and speaking. The more actions you use, the students will understand English better, faster and more precise. Then there is STT, student talk time. Students need to talk. Students need to talk about 80% of the class while the teacher only talks the other 20% of the class. If you really want to be clever with students who are intermediate and know the class routine, just write on the board, I have a sore throat and cannot talk. Students will volunteer to call attendance. They will ask questions about your directions to clarify what you want. You don't have to say a word. They will do everything. Another way is through group work where they're actually working together. They're talking and conversing in English. This will help their listening and speaking skills. Pair stronger students with weaker students to help the weaker students. Have a positive outlook and don't get angry when they speak in their native language. The student might be explaining a rule so the other student can understand. In some cultures students need to ask the other students on they should answer a question and need some clarification before answering. Some teachers think that when a student goes to an English class that they have to speak English only with no exceptions. This sends a bad message to the students if you do this. Some students may think that the teacher believes that their mother language isn't valuable or come believe that their native language is inferior. Students may take offense and may start not to like teacher. Remember, don't get angry when they speak in their native language. They may honestly not understand you and by screaming, it will discourage them from learning. The only time you might want to get upset is when they come to class and they refuse to speak English. During the whole class they are just having a conversation in the back of the room in their native language and they're not paying attention to the lesson. Just kindly remind them of the class and let their grades reflect it. So again if you insist that English only. You may send the wrong message to the students that you do not respect their language. When you are teaching give multiple examples for a better chance they will understand the lesson. If a teacher said an elephant has four legs and the students look confused, draw a picture on the board or show a picture of an elephant and then point at the legs. When the students see an elephant they understand what the word elephant means. They then can understand what are legs, body parts, eyes, nose, ears, etc. Colors and numbers. You can later on teach idioms and talk about letting a cat out of the bag. The students may ask, what are you talking about? When it comes to letting a cat out of the bag. So the best way to teach idioms is to just write on the board. The idiom and the meaning. 
Let the cat out of a bag equals to tell a secret. Then you say well let me show you. I'm going to give ice cream to the class on Tuesday, but I don't want anyone to know it's a secret. But I will tell her. And then she will tell everybody. So it was supposed to be a secret between me and her. She told the whole class and the whole class now knows about it. So she let the cat out of the bag. The more example you give the better the students understand. Demonstrate meaning, form and pronunciation. Show how the grammar breaks down and how to speak it. Talk about the word order of a sentence. When you talk about grammar, begin. How to speak show pronunciation, stress, tongue and lip positions. Emphase showing what a sentence means. When you break everything down and put it in context, let them understand what it means. Give plenty of anecdotes and handouts then you will discover that you get better students and results. Give them plenty of independent practice, they will begin to see their results and progress. The more handouts o you give, explanations and positive feedback. They will see their progress and understand know they are improving. If you not give handouts and only explain on the board, the students will only see the lesson once or twice, they will forget it quickly. They need to see it eight times before they remember. By reviewing handouts, you know what the students have learned what they're having difficulties with. This will help you prepare future lessons. Recycle lessons in order for the students to understand the lesson better. Involve students in activities and ask a lot of questions of them. Both of these cab be used as assessments and you can fully understand if they learned a lesson or what needs to be reviewed. Use open-ended questions to better understand what the students learned or show their understanding and make sure you give proper wait time for the answer. Remember that most students you're teaching may or may not speak a lot of English. When you ask a question they may be thinking, what is the teacher asking me? Then they start to thinking okay, this is what I was asked. So they try to think of each word and what you're actually asking. Then they need to think of a response if you give them proper wait time. It actually gives them time to think about what your question and how they're going to respond. There is no need to yell. Take the time and understand what you're asking of them. Another way to discover if the students understand you is the thumbs up, thumbs down response. If you use the thumbs up, thumbs down response. Ask the students if they understand. Thumbs up, I understand. Thumbs down, I don't understand. In this way, the students can tell you if they don't understand without embarrassing themselves. I don't know and you can use whatever method you want. A closed fist, shaking palm, etc. Other students may scratch their head so the other students don't know that they don't understand. Remember it can take up to 5 or 10 years for students to become fluent as Rome wasn't built in a day. Don't ever think that the students are going to be 100% perfect. No one is. Well, that is all the time we have for today. I hope to see you in the next video.